Y bueno, antes de comenzar, queríamos este, mostrarles un video. Está en inglés, pero tiene algunos. ¿Lo, lo han hecho desde Counterman? Sí, sí. Um, es muy cortito, ¿eh? Ahora no sé. No, no, no. Parece que se explica solito. ¿no? Ahora es donde la técnica la más which has always kept human rights high on its agenda, while taking care of arts, culture, and science. Europe has taken care of numerous things, except for the fuel tank. It is realizing it could run short of energy. And the reaction? Europe is in a panic. In 2006, when Russia cut its gas supplies, energy security shot up the EU agenda. It started drawing up matter and matter plans to get gas and electricity from other countries. The priorities? Ensure the uninterrupted supply of oil and gas. Favor Europe consumption of massive amounts of energy, even though its own supplies are dwindling. Build colossal infrastructures to send energy from strategic countries to the European market. But this only means we close our eyes to the problem. Europe's energy comes mainly from fossil fuels, which get huge subsidies that squeeze out renewables and contribute massively to global environmental destruction. Europe's sources of energy come mostly from beyond its borders. Europe imports over 60% of its gas and 80% of its oil. Europe consumes massive amounts of energy, increasing pressure on countries that it considers strategic. But this is not all. Development aid to the Global South is just a face-saving lie. Local residents don't get the energy and they don't get the revenues. The energy goes to Europe and the profits to corporations, leaving the people only with the social and environmental damage. Forced migration. Land loss, destruction of ecosystems. It's like we're back in colonial times, the West making money and feeling morally superior. To carry out its projects, the European Union props up the nastiest regimes on Earth. Nigeria, Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan. Corrupt governments with whom the EU should not do any kind of business. But the EU supports those regimes to ensure its energy supplies, thus enriching dictators, multinational corporations, and private investors, and de facto supporting serious crimes against local populations. What kind of security can Europe enjoy by physically tying its energy future to politically unstable regions over 5,000 kilometers away? What happens when, as in the Arab Spring, those governments fall? People may not want their energy supplies, on which Europe has grown dependent, to be exploited by others any longer. Are we more secure with energy security? Or actually more vulnerable? Or will the EU be prepared to get more blood on its hands in order to protect its interests? How much military expenditure will be needed to defend the new energy structures? Most of the mega projects devised by the EU are completely mad. The most striking example? The Grand Inga Dam and Hydropower Scheme, a price tag of 100 billion euros. It would be the largest power generating body ever built. A 6,000 kilometer cable across jungle, desert and sea to bring energy directly to Europe. 
impacts on the entire South Atlantic ecosystem, all energy for export or use in mines, while 93% of the Congolese population live in poverty and have no access to electricity. These projects are often designed to highlight the role of the politicians that are primarily interested in speculating on the virtual funds involved in the imagined future. In any event, fossil fuels will eventually run out. Why not plan for what comes next? Why deprive other countries of their livelihoods and us of a better future to keep playing this losing game? But Europe is unwilling to change the rules. Uh-oh. This is what is happening. The time for growing up has come.